The presentation I'm going to make um, is uh, related to the transnational governance of the Carpenter fishery on Lake Kariba towards the transdisciplinary governance for sustainable fisheries. The map shows uh, the location of Lake Kariba, which is uh, on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. So it is a shared resource uh, on the Zambezi River. The picture on the right shows uh, drying wrecks. The carpenter, when they are harvested, they are sun dried after salting on board the vessels. And uh, after sun drying, they are then uh, packed for sale. So the bulk of the catch is sold uh, as a dried carpenter with a small amount sold as uh, fresh fish because most of the markets are away from uh, the lake. In terms of the lake itself, it is a man-made lake which was created in the 1950s for generation of hydroelectric power. However, uh, in order to uh, make use of the recently created uh, pelagic or offshore ecological niche, uh, the carpenter, which are a freshwater sardine, were introduced from uh, Lake Tanganyika. So the carpenter fishery is a single species fishery which targets the carpenter but um, the bycatch consists mainly of uh, the tiger fish, Hydrocinus vitatus, but it constitutes a very small percentage of the catches. In terms of importance, the fishery is important with respect to livelihood sources as well as income sources. So it does create employment opportunities along the whole uh, value chain. It is also important as a protein source, both uh, at the local level and also at uh, national level. The research questions that uh, we focused on were what are the governance arrangements, carpenter fishery, what are the major challenges, and what are the possible ways of addressing these uh, challenges. The methodology that was used was primarily key informant interviews um, where people who have uh, wide experience in the fishery were interviewed. Uh, document reviews um, involved uh, going through both published and unpublished literature. And uh, personal observations were also made. And these were based on um, the period uh, during which um, there was interaction within the carpenter fishery itself. And then the results in terms of the governance, uh, historically, when the commercial fishery was established, uh, the governance was uh, biocentric um, in the sense that uh, the management of the fishery was uh, focused completely on biological parameters. So classical fisheries management uh, models of um, maximum sustainable yield were used and um, the resource um, allocation, the rights for access to the resource were within the purview of uh, central government uh, in both countries. And um, access into the fishery was mainly, and it still is, through a licensing system where uh, companies or individuals get uh, licenses uh, for fishing. So the focus here is on regulating fishing effort as a management tool. Um, after the top-down approach that was in place in the 1990s, uh, co-management was uh, introduced in both countries with the objective of uh, involving the um, resource users in the management of the fishery. And uh, following the introduction of co-management, the focus now moved from the classical biological models to bioeconomic assessment, um, which involved uh, looking at both 
biological and economic uh, parameters in the management of the fishery. However, challenges still persisted and uh, these uh, included um, a continued decline in annual landings, so catches continued to decline and uh, catch per unit effort also continued to decline. And then although co-management had been introduced, uh, it was more of decentralization and not uh, devolution per se, uh, and therefore aspects such as uh, uh, resource allocation continued to be the, res the responsibility of the two governmental um, bodies through their representatives at the local level. The other challenge was that uh, dis the disciplinary approach to management continued where the focus was still on the natural system uh, with very little consideration of the social system. However, given these uh, issues, we propose uh, a transdisciplinary approach to the governance of the fishery. In Zambia, um, there have been policy and uh, legislative reforms that have been implemented, and these uh, reforms provide an opportunity to incorporate uh, transdisciplinary governance which is uh, both inclusive as well as uh, equitable. In Zimbabwe, um, there are efforts at uh, implementing policy reforms uh, as part of uh, transforming the governance. Uh, these uh, policy reforms center primarily on um, the drafting of the fisheries and aquaculture policy which will then inform the formulation of a fisheries and aquaculture strategy. So this drafting, um, which is still um, in process, also allows for um, the incorporation of uh, a transdisciplinary approach in the management of the fishery. So within that process, it would be necessary to have reforms in terms of the legal framework, which is currently in place, as well as the institutional framework, which is currently in place in uh, Zimbabwe. And then at the transboundary level or at the joint uh, management level, there are um, uh, structures that are in place um, in terms of uh, the legal and institutional framework and uh, this um, allows for um, joint management of the fishery. And uh, these uh, structures are also quite pertinent in that they provide an opportunity for um, a revision of the framework so that it becomes more inclusive and more equitable um, with um, a higher level of uh, stakeholder representation. So this is what uh, we propose. Um, thank you.